is Jack. And here we are at what used to be the, uh, what was this place called? The Double Tree. The Double Tree. And now it's called the Riverside. But, um, and there's a bar in here where Jessica and I first met. It used to be called Club Max. It's now called the Sapphire. But we're going to go in and see if it's uh, available for us to take some footage in. So call me at this way. This has changed a lot, but this is where Jack and I met. Um, right about here. Yeah. Oh, and actually. he was standing over here. Yeah, I was on this side. <laughs> and there was a big table right there in the middle. This was a divider and it had mirrors set up and there were three dance floors. Yeah, there was a dance floor where that light is. There was a dance floor over there where that light is. And right here in the middle was a box with a DJ in it. And then there was another dance floor right here in the middle. We tore it up on those dance floors. But uh, yeah, this is where we met. This is where Jimmy introduced us. Jimmy was a good friend of mine. He was friends with Jack a long time ago. But um, I met Jam Jimmy when I was about 22, I think, and um, met him here. And he was dancing by himself. And my dad said, go out there and dance with that old man. And I did. And then we became instant friends. And we danced like every Friday night here, and a couple years into dancing here, Jack walked in and yeah. he said, "Let me introduce you to my old pal Jack here." And, uh, yeah, and then I, and then I uh, immediately fell in love with her. I guess you would say. I looked at her, and the first thing that drew me in was her eyes, of course. And everybody says that about her, but it's really amazing. She does have amazing <laughs> eyes. But uh, I was kind of, you know, playing it cool back then. So. I was just talking with my friends and stuff, kind of eavesdropping on her and Jimmy talking, and in the back of my mind being a little fan, uh, fascinated with her, and hoping that I would someday see her again, and thinking that night I was actually going to ask her to dance with me, but uh, Jimmy was called Disco Jimmy for a reason, and he kept her on the dance floor pretty much all that night. Tell me something, uh, what's the first thing you said, you thought to yourself when you met this awesome guy named Jack. <laughs> I was pretty smitten. Um, I was really shy to talk to him, but because I, I really thought he was handsome. And I mean, I wasn't super shy to talk to people when I was out with Jimmy. We'd talk because we had a lot of people that would approach us and talk to us about dancing together. But um, when Jimmy introduced us to Jack, we, we kind of hit it off and stuff. But I was always felt that weak in the knees, and I know it sounds really silly, but it really did feel that way every time we, we sat down and got together. And, um, the first song we danced to here was a Justin Timberlake song, and it's a uh, sexy back, get your sexy back. <laughs> yeah, I love that song. <laughs> that was our first song that we danced to here on the dance floor, but, um, and it was hard was to get fun. me off the floor. Yeah, but. she would even dance by herself sometimes. <laughs> I would. Okay, so yeah, like a big bunch of girlfriends, and they'd sat right here. There, there was um, a group. I don't remember. Were they from the Philippines or something? Yeah, Philippines, I think they were from the Mexico, Philippines. I yeah. And I can't remember all their names. There was Barbie, Barbie and, and uh, her name was easy to remember. Yeah. And all very tiny little women. Yeah. Very sassy, very close to each other, but they knew Jack and they knew oh, yeah. Jimmy. Maria was one of them, and I can't remember all of them. And I'd get those girls coming out on the dance floor, and, um... And they'd all sit right here. <laughs> they took up the whole booth. Every time a good song would come on, they, all these girls would go out on the dance floor by themselves. Just a bunch of girls dancing mm -hmm. by themselves. It was like daughters and grandmas yeah. and aunts. They were so They're cute. all ages. Um, I just remember I was in this booth over here with the date mm -hmm. the second time I saw Jessica. And I couldn't believe I finally saw her, and I couldn't ditch my date because not that I would have ditched my date, but um, I really wanted to take some time to get to know Jessica better. But
been sent by me. Here we are at uh, a place that's kind of near and dear to our hearts. It's another, as we're continuing our little walk down memory lane today. Um, this is a place is called Catherine Alberson Park. And I don't know how many miles it is. It's a pretty big park. It's got uh, all kinds of walking paths and a lot of geese and migrating uh, ducks and things like that that come through here. Uh, I can't remember what the first time was we came here. Do you remember that? Uh, yeah, it was in summer of 07. Yeah. And uh, we came Women here. Women and their dates, they remember that. No, I don't remember <laughs> it specifically. I, I probably have it written down somewhere at home or pictures, I'm sure. But we came through here and just for a walk, and we ended up goofing off like a couple of kids and playing hide and seek. This is a huge park, yeah. and there are lots of places to hide, and Jack always found me. No yeah, what. we'll get some shots of what she was hiding in, and, <laughs> and you will be amazed that I found her. And I've always had this belief that if two people are connected really well, um, like, um, you know, it's a, a love that comes from the core, that um, if one person is in trouble, you'll sense it, or if one person needs you to come to assist them, do that so I told her I said go hide in the park somewhere I want to test this theory and see if I can find you and when you see what she was hiding in and I was finding her he and, did. He I, was, me and I wasn't like it wasn't like uh, I was searching for hours either I just walked and just he'd find me like so walk, quick walk, walk right and find her uh, which was we'd amazing. be running around here and people just looked at us like we were yeah we were just goofing crazy. around playing hide and seek and <laughs> And every time I found her, uh, of course it cost her a kiss. Yeah. But uh, but I found her a lot, and I just used my senses. And, and not that I'm saying that I got some kind of powers or anything. I just have a, fe a good connection with Jessica. And, oh, oh, look, look at the bunny rabbit. There's a rabbit no. coming to uh, a wild See, rabbit in this park here. Has just hopped up to us and is eating. Hi, little buddy. And he just hopped right up here. So when you come Sweet. down to Catherine Albertson Park, you might see this kind of thing. Oh, I wish I had my camera. Sweet. Like, I wish I could feed it. So I could take a picture of him. See if I can feed him something. Well, he's friendly. He has no fear of us. Hey, Aw. Like there him. he goes. He's like, no I'm out of here. No <laughs> tell hopping across the bunny trail there. <laughs> Little fat boy. deer that uh, it seems like wherever Jessica and I go and this deer is wild he can go wherever he wants in the city and he's decided to come in this park uh, obviously a little bit used to humans but uh, I doubt if he'll let me pet him <laughs> but uh, we, everywhere we go we see um, some kind of animal it seems like and that's one thing that Jessica and I just have except for when we saw the bear at one time and that that's another story. But that was a little <laughs> the bear up at Grand Jean. Yeah, we so we cow, we went up to uh, coyotes. And yeah, we've oh, seen fox and yeah. wild turkeys and um, but the the bear was up at Grand Jean and we went up there to go get an ice cream cone. We were camping. It was our first camping trip together, and Jack took me up there to go get a huckleberry ice cream cone. And so it's okay. We saw a bear come pummeling down the other side of the mountain on the other side of the river. Thankfully, there was a river separating us. So this tree and that street, what's the name of the street again? Philippi. Philippi. And it's right over by Philippi in Overland. And we had left Club Max one night. Another date. Can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah. No, I have it written down. <laughs> I should have looked at the dates before we did the video, but um, we were sitting here talking talked a lot in the car back then because um, my little desert lily here I call her that because she was born in Nevada and, and loves the desert but that uh, I was born in the mountains but um, <clears throat> we would we would uh, sit and talk and reminisce about old times and and she'd tell me her stories and I'd tell her mine and one day we we're sitting here and we were in my little red PT cruiser back then we call it the clubhouse yeah we call it the clubhouse and, we were just sitting here talking and, and 
This, for whatever reason, is the first time, the first place I ever said I love you to Jessica. He said I love you first. And But I, what was so funny about it was okay. Here, let me focus on you. Okay. So what was so cute about it was for months we had been together and uh, I don't know, like six months probably, but we had known each other for another six months on top of it. So I think we were a year into knowing each other by that point. And Jack and I had this thing going for all that time where it was, I adore you, or you're precious to me, or just, and it was always a lot of I adore yous. And um, sometimes Jack would kiss on me and be like, I really like you, and things like that. And I knew he wanted to say I love you. And I wanted to say it too, but I was waiting for him to say it first. And I think it was just because I always had to pursue him in the beginning, you know, to give him my number and to get him to ask me out for dates. And so I wanted him to come to me and tell me he loved me first. And when we pulled in that night and we were sitting here talking, he just kind of blurted it out, I love you. And it was really sweet, and yeah, it's like the first time he said I love you, but there was a time before that in March of that year, of 07, and we were hanging out at another tree, we'll show you that, and we were in the back seat of his car talking, and he said, well, don't you want to love me? I want to love you. <laughs> and he was really trying to get me to say I love you first, but I wouldn't do it. So it took a couple more months, and that night we just pulled in and he just blurted it out. Yeah, it was, it was really probably sweet. because I was feeling pretty nostalgic and pretty close to her at that time because we were really talking about um, old times and old friends and how much we cared about them and how much we cared about each other. And, and it just, I just felt really close to her. So um, it wasn't one of those. Um, I love you, buddy, type thing. No, it, was, it wasn't, I it love was, you. It, it was, was I'm I in definitely love meant you. it, you know, so. <laughs> okay, so this looks really funny to film this wall <laughs> in this tree, but Jack, when he was uh, working closer to uh, Overland here, at this end, Maple Grove, Overland area, I guess it was. Anyways, um, He'd have lunch breaks, and this is where he'd come park his car. And I didn't get to see him a lot when we first started dating because he worked a lot of hours and stuff, and my shifts were always different from his. So um, I would drive in from Nampa a lot of times, sometimes every day, Monday through Friday, and meet him here for lunch. And we would sit here. Go ahead, pull in there. Yeah, we would sit. Sit right underneath this tree in his car, in his cruiser and that just became our clubhouse and this was our spot right underneath this tree where we'd sit and stare at this wall and jibber jabber and, and then when i met jessica i was a creature of a habit i'd be going getting taco bell taco time or hamburgers or whatever parking here and she lived clear out in nampa which is a long ways from here um, I don't know how long that drive is. What is that, oh, 45 minutes, yeah, 30 minutes? Yeah, it took like me about 40 minutes to get here. Yeah, and she would drive clear from Nampa just to spend a half an hour maybe, sometimes 45 minutes, sometimes a whole hour with me here at just to eat our lunch. Um, but I can't believe how much this little tree is connected to our lives just because of all the things we learned about each other and all the things we got to know about each other um, over those lunch hours. And we're not talking like maybe five lunch hours. We're talking every single day practically lunch hours for a long time. For months and, on end. Yeah, yeah, and she was here for months on end. And then sometimes <clears throat> I would meet him here or we'd um, leave my car parked here. We'd go out for dates and stuff. So this area we're in, it's vacant now, but it used to be a school here, Franklin Elementary School, and Jack went to school here um, when he was little. And he brought me over here when we were still pretty new to dating, and we had William with us, and we played out on the, the playground, and there was a kissing corner where Jack had one of his, well, his first kiss from a girl, and he took me over into the kissing corner, and he kissed me, and I told him that I was going to be the uh, last girl he gets to kiss, and 
here I am about ready to become his wife, so I pretty much pegged that. <laughs> um, it was really sweet. And they knocked down the school, but um, it was fun to make a, a memory there with him and, and hear his stories about his childhood at elementary school. And then this restaurant behind me is the Mandarin Palace, and we used to go there a lot for dates. And it had pretty good Chinese food. We stopped going there after a while because it I didn't feel so great after eating there, but um, <laughs> the waitress that was there was really friendly, but she came up to me one time, we walked in there, and she swore I was 16, and she wanted to see my ID because she thought Jack was dating a 16-year-old, so that was kind of funny, but... Well, you do, you look very young. <laughs> Does she look 32? Come on, she doesn't ja look 32. Jack uh, was always nervous about his age with me, and... <laughs> this is actually kind of funny. I didn't know how old he really was for probably the first two years of dating him. He kept it under wraps. When I first met him and he was celebrating a birthday at uh, Club Max, he walked in there and I said, well, how old are you today? He said, 38. And a year later, we're sitting in my room at my sister's house. I was living with my sister for a while in Nampa. And we were doing a real age test or something for Dr. Oz on the website back then. And I said, well, what's your birth date? He said, I can't remember. And he's like, do the math, I'm 38. And I said, no, you're not. You turned 38 last year. And he said, no, I'm 38 this year. You, you don't remember that right. And I said, no, I remember you said 38. And so I knew something was up, but it took another year from that point for me to find out. <laughs> we were, um, he was over visiting me at my house, at my trailer at that time. And he was in the shower and I went and snuck in his pants and got his driver's license. He wasn't thrilled about that, but I discovered how old he was. And he wasn't, it was, it took a while for the age difference to settle in for him, but it, it didn't ever really bother me. But I still think I'm 38. Yeah. And a lot of times <clears throat> you put him and William together and it's like having two 11 year olds, but, um, and that doesn't equal 22 between the two of them. <laughs> <laughs> I used to live there years ago for a short while and um, we have a lot of memories over there. After I moved out of my sister's house that I was at temporarily, I got this, this place here and I had William and he was tiny then, he was still sleeping in his little Thomas the Train toddler bed and when we first moved in there, well when I first moved in there, the place had spiders so bad, brown recluses. They were all over, and I'm not exaggerating. It was like, kind of a horror film. They were like crawling on the walls and the sinks and the toilets and the tubs. They were all over the place. And there were cats that would get underneath there and howl at night and climb all over the place. And so I had to constantly deal with the uh, landlord to get that taken care of. And um, and then also the, like the water tank, we had like brown water coming out of there. We had to get a new water tank in there. And, but aside from some of those challenging ordeals that we had to go through and sleepless nights because of spiders, um, we had a lot of fun cooking meals in there and making memories with William. And he learned how to ride his bike on these back streets through here with uh, Jack and I. And um, there used to be a pretty good sized tree there in the back by that window. And I was trying to get William to clean up his room. It was such a mess. And he was about four at the time. And I was really trying to get him to work on his room and get his toys cleaned up. And he was procrastinating and waiting for his dad to come pick him up for his dad's weekend. And so it just so happened that the landlord decided to have that tree pulled up over the weekend. And so when William got back from his dad's, I took him back there and I said, Hulk came by here and he was very mad that you didn't clean your room. And he was so mad that he pulled the tree right up out of the backyard and his eyes got huge and he went in and cleaned his room spick and span because he did not want to get the Hulk angry. And it was so funny because back then we used to use superheroes and stuff to encourage him with potty training and stuff even before that when he was littler we'd have Jack's brother Bill call him up on the phone we'd be trying to get him to go to the bathroom on his own and he would pretend that he was like Batman or Spider-Man or whatever Willie was into at the time and he would totally believe it it was really adorable and so his 
when he heard Hulk Smash came by, to, and that's what he called him, Hulk Smash, uh, came by and ripped up the tree because he was mad that Rolling's room was uh, a mess. So that was a cute story. <clears throat> then we had a lot of uh, times where we made dinner in that little trailer, and uh, we did a lot of juicing and things like that. And the carpet uh, in there, <laughs> I don't know if it's that way now, but when I moved in there, it was the exact carpet my grandma had in her house from like the 50s and 60s before she remodeled her house. And so I thought that was kind of funny and it had wood paneling in there. How long did you wind up living there? Oh, I think a year. Yeah, it wasn't very long. It was long. a year. And then I moved out of there and I moved in with Jack temporarily um, in August of 09 while my house was being built. And then we moved into my house um, after it was finished being built in November of 09. So luckily that was a temporary thing there, but we did have some good memories. And good Christmases too. Now give me yeah. a smudge. <laughs> <laughs> part of Morris Creek and it goes down into Ruby Creek Park just down the road and we used to come here a lot because um, during the weekdays with William and Jack and after Jack got out of work and make sandwiches and uh, sauce cookies and play in this creek it was a little bit more shallow down the way but this pipe over there um, one time, it was, this was not so fast moving, it was a little shallower, but, and we were walking through it with William, and there were some uh, salmon caught on the other side of that, and they couldn't get back into the stream, so I had to go over there and pick them up with my bare hands and throw them back into the water. And William thought that was really neat, that his mom picked up fish and got them back in the water and saved them. And he must have been probably three at the time, so it was really cute, a special memory. And then um, there was another time we came up here and we let a bunch of butterflies go. We like to get those butterfly kits where you grow them from caterpillars and then we release them when they were full grown into butterflies. So a lot of special memories here playing with William and building sand castles and swimming in the creek with him. Hi, here we are at uh, Lucky Peak. Oh no, not Lucky Peak, Roby Creek. <laughs> Roby Creek uh, Park. And uh, Jessica and I used to come up here a lot, uh, especially when we were first dating. And uh, we used to love that this little creek ran by here, and we'd bring William up occasionally too. And uh, he and I used to play in this. And I remember the first time that he and I actually played in this little park is I took him down in there and he was all fascinated by it and stuff and then um, I had my jeans on and everything and I just jumped right in there with him and and it was it was fun time it was a really good good day and we used to bring our uh, subway lunches up here and there used to be a big tall tree back here and it was really shaded and a picnic table back in this secluded area here and we'd have our lunch uh, eat our subway sandwiches back there and talk about the future and, and a lot of times uh, we'd be making you know plans for the future and things like that and one day I was per feeling particularly close to Jessica and and we were talking and I just blurted it out um, why don't we get married and run off together or something like that and, and uh, she basically looked at me and her back was to me and she turned around and she said are you crazy and I thought to myself maybe I am I don't know but uh, it, it was a spur of the moment, one of those love moments, and it was very... We still, were still really new. It's still a fond memory to me. And of course we've had adventures all over the, the mountains. I think we were too. like six or seven months in, so we were still pretty yeah. new. It was, it was a fun time, and 